to me, sustainability means uh, just what the word implies. Um, making sure that things can be maintained, sustained, uh, over the long term. And when it comes to sustainability in collections preservation in libraries, archives, and museums, it means that we're not spending any more energy or any more of our time or any more uh, of our resources uh, to get a good environment for our collections than we absolutely need to. How are you going to answer that question of are our mechanical systems doing what they need to in the most uh, effective and efficient way? First thing you've got to know is what are they doing? Second, you've got to know what is the effect on our collections of the environments that those machines are creating? And thirdly, then you begin to look at are there ways to operate them more efficiently and still get a good environment? Some people regard a good environment for collections as one that is unwavering. We call it flatlining, where the temperature and humidity remain constant. We now realize that that whole approach is, is inherently unsustainable. And the reason it is, is because it ignores some of the fundamental facts about deterioration. That there is one ideal environment is really not the case. There are different environments that are ideal for different materials and different parts even of the same collection object. It is definitely not a one-size-fits-all situation. The easy way of analyzing data to look for spikes and dips and saying all spikes and dips are unwelcome um, is not always the case. The right kind of changes um, in the right sorts of circumstances can actually be beneficial. Don't get me wrong, in general, you know, if a steady environment is available at very good conditions, that's probably to be preferred. But in the real world, and especially when we factor in sustainability, maintaining the same condition every day of the year is, is on balance, not wise. Uh, it's not wise because it will cause us to use more energy. It will cause us to, in most instances, do more work on the air that comes in from the outside than we need to in order to make it good for our collections. Objects can survive temperature change without damage as a general rule of thumb. Humidity changes are different, but the interesting thing about humidity changes is that most objects and object configurations require days, weeks, or months to fully feel the impact of humidity change. And we can use that fact to our advantage. There are a number of beneficial scenarios that are possible by moving to a dynamic approach to environmental control. Day-night differences or seasonal variations in set points that make sense from the energy and sustainability point of view without harming the collections. Now we have systems that instead run basically at low fire all the time. We have systems that will shut off when we don't need the heat. A chiller will throttle down as, as well as the pumps, saving tons of energy there. Well, let's say we're in the winter. We can go 100% outside air as long as it's not too cold, and we can free cool the space. So instead of using the chiller plant, we can throttle that thing right down to the minimum or even turn it off and use outside air only. And that's, that's a huge energy savings. The subject can be complex, but I think we do ourselves a disservice if we pursue a simple-minded, it must be uh, the same conditions all year round. Uh, I think a lot of places are beginning to understand this. They're experimenting with different set points for the winter and the summer and, and uh, gradually moving from those set points during the transition seasons. But if you are going to say we want to provide the environments that are an optimal combination of minimal impact on the global climate, in other words, as sustainable and green as we can make them, at the same time being as good as they can be for our collections with their particular needs. If you're going to try to optimize and bring together those two things, what you really need above all else is a way to measure what the environments are doing to the collections. And that's where IPI's tools and approaches come into it.